Well, hello folks. Something different today. As you're probably aware, I use the Pentax KS1. Now there's a feature on here that I have yet to have access to on its menu system. It's called Astro Tracer. And it's activated in one particular way. You have to buy a device that will help you enable it. I purchase such a device and this is what it looks like. This is the GPS-01 and it quite simply goes on top of the hot shoe here. I'll just take the little hot shoe guard off and it goes on there and you lock it on and it sits on there like that. Now what this will do is this will lock into satellites, GPS satellites and tell the camera exactly where it is. And with a special calibration move, little dance the camera has to do, it will also tell the uh, camera what tilt it's got like this, what tilt it's got like that, and also what rotation it's got like that. Now this is all very important when you're doing astrophotography, photographing the stars. You know that if you leave the shutter open too long, the Earth's rotation causes the stars to cause streaks across your image. What this device is doing is telling the camera which orientation and where it is on the planet and everything else. And it will move the sensor, which normally sits flat like that, slowly in time with the stars drifting. Now you can't do it for long because there isn't too much movement in the, in the actual um, sensor. So five minutes is its ma maximum, but five minutes is pretty, pretty good. It does have its limitations. You really need to use semi kind of wide angled lenses. You can't use your three, 400 mil zoom lenses. There just isn't enough fine tuning in the whole system to stop those stars trailing. At least I haven't found that yet. But let me just show you how this thing works. So first of all, we switch the camera on. True Pentax style, it goes brrrt because it shakes the sensor to get rid of any dust. Isn't that a neat idea? So there's no dust spots, hopefully, on the sensor. So on the back here, we put it into bulb mode. So that's what we do first. And then we switch on a little button at the top here to switch that on. You know what? And it starts flashing. Now, if we go into the menu system, you see at the bottom there, it says GPS, where it says green. We go across. There's the menu for Astro Tracer, which is now enabled. It's not grayed out anymore. And we go along and we switch that on. Like that. And then we come down one and it says precise calibration and we go on there and we get a picture like this and it says move the camera in all of these axes now the satellites are already talking to this so it knows where on the planet we are already what it doesn't know is which way the camera's facing so that's when you do your dance one axis two axis, and then finally, oh, did we get it? Nope, we didn't. So we'll do it again. And bingo. It is done. So now the camera knows which orientation it is. So in bulb mode, normally you would hold the shutter down and it would hold it open for as long as you've got your finger on the shutter. In the menu mode, I can switch the button so that when I press it once, the shutter stays open. When I press it again, the shutter closes. So you can do long exposures of longer than 30 seconds. In bulb mode on here just now, 
we have 30 seconds. But look what we can do. We can start adding time. Going all the way. And there you go. There's your maximum. Five minutes. Isn't that cool? Uh, at the moment it's set for F29. <laughs> so I'll just take that back down. So you would normally run your lens. This is the kit lens. It's standard. 3.5 would be its widest. I would probably run this at 18 mil. Point it up at the sky, wherever it is there. Put the two second timer on. Manually focus it, obviously. And then hit the button. And it will take a shot. Probably about a minute, minute and a half is enough, usually. You can take the ISO up to about 1600 if you want. And uh, in a moonless sky, it captures an awful lot of good stuff. And it's incredible how good this little device is. Not cheap though, $200 in Canadian money. But I think you'll agree, some of the results are actually quite worth wearing. I took some pictures from here one morning. Orion was nice and bright behind me last weekend. And I think you'll agree that the images it captured were quite good. I also did a shot with the GPS unit switched off just to show you the blur in the stars if I'd tried to do it normally without using this device. You can do another technique and that works out that you only take a 15 second exposure, but you take more of them. And then you have to be creative in your software and layer the shots. And that way you build up resolution and depth and all the rest of it. Not that easy to do and doesn't always work really well. Straight out of camera, one shot. That's pretty handy. Pretty handy. I've only had a wee time to play with this at the moment. But this is the start of the winter. This is when it's going to get good. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get out there and do some more stuff with this camera and with the GPS unit on it and get some more, <clears throat> more shots of constellations and various things. I want to do a bit more of Andromeda. I have captured Andromeda before on this camera, but that was a single exposure without the GPS unit. I want to try and get it with the GPS unit to see what the difference is. The other thing I want to do is to take multiple exposures of a minute and a half, two minutes, and layer them together to see if I can get even more detail in the shots. But here's a couple of shots to show you at the end of this video just what I've got so far. I think you'll agree, it's actually quite impressive. Uh, I was using uh, my other standard kit lens, which is the 70 to 300, and I had that at 100 mil, which is not, you know, huge by any means, but it does capture quite a lot of the sky, and it did seem to um, seem to capture quite a bit of detail. I was quite surprised, and if I take the ISO way up to about 4,000, I actually have to use f-stops and close the lens down because I don't have, um, because I can do, you know, and because the, the math works out that way, which I've never done astrophotography with less than wide open on the lens. So it gives you more scope to play around with. Anyway, that's enough from me just now. This little tune up, this little uh, tu uh, tutorial of how this, uh, feature works in this little gadget. Like I said, it just goes on the top of the camera. It also records information um, so that when you take your photographs and put them into Lightroom, Lightroom throws up Google Map and says, this is where you are. And when you took the photograph, the camera was pointing at so many degrees up. Lots and lots of detail and tips like that. It's amazing. So if you were just doing ordinary photography, landscape style, during the day, you could actually run this as well and it would collect um, the waypoints basically of your hike through the wilderness. 
so you'd know exactly where each shot was taken. I don't know if that's really beneficial. Interesting, but just something else to add to what is already quite a phenomenal camera from what I've seen. Um, yeah, anyway, enjoy the images. I do hope you enjoy them, and I do hope I get some more to share with you sometime soon. Take care, folks.